Yo, what's going on? Tony from LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com. Trying to shut my music off here. Good. Excellent. Welcome. Thursday night. Tony from LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com. I want to say thank you all for getting on tonight. Look forward to talking to you about expensive or cheaper materials when doing auto body work. So for those of you in the house, if let's do a quick, quick, Jose said wise choice. Let's do a quick, quick uh, audio test. Just make sure um, you guys are hearing me. So how's the audio? Audio is okay. If you want to type in quickly where you're from and how many times you've been on the show, that would be great. Steven Garza, VIP Port Isabel. Nice. So it sounds, looks like you guys are hearing me. Perfect. We got Jose, wise choice, absolutely. Richard from Iowa, Miguel, how's everybody doing? Anthony Cheney, Richard. We got Mr. 927, okay, Cayman. Ant Dogs in the house. We got Dallas, Texas, four times. Thanks for keeping track. Eric, El Paso, Texas. Quickly type in right now where you're from in the house and I'll call it out. Hopefully we got some people from around the world. Las Vegas, North Carolina. Uh, Richard, ninth time. Tony V, what's up Tony V? Orlando, fourth time. Fifth time in the house. Montreal, Canada. Cool, Canada. Uh, PA, we got PA in the house. We got Chicago. We got Puerto Rico in the house. We got Toronto, Juan Hernandez, Harling, what? Harling. Harlan, Harlingen, Texas. Never heard of it. Phoenix in the house. Mr. Danny. We got Jeffrey. We got Low Roland. Yo, yo. We got people texting me. What's going on? There's actually a car that I'm looking to buy. We got VIP Hawaii. What's going on, Kevin? Yes, yes. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Mike from from where? T. Nati. The Nati. Mike from the Nati. What is that? Georgia. Colorado. Jose. Colorado. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for getting on tonight. Rio Grande Valley. <coughs> All right. Tonight, I wanted to talk to you about materials, paint materials. Okay? And we're going to be talking about some high-end brands and some low-end brands, and just talking about some of the quality, uh, the performance, and what you get, and, and kind of, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go from there. So how many of you guys, be interactive tonight. I wanna get a, 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 a poll here. How many of you guys only use name brand products? Raise your hand, type in me, name brand. So if you're name brand guys, like you like to use name brand PPG, you know, the top of the line stuff, name brand, top of the line, type in the chat, name brand, top of the line. So I, I just want to see, you know, what's going on here. Okay, so Tony uses Eastwood. We got Fernando uses top of the line. What kind of products? Can you just type in the chat what kind of products you're using? PPG or DuPont or Sherman Williams? or other European brands. First time on live, awesome. Type that in there really quickly. So we got a lot of people, how do you like the Eastwood products? I've never used Eastwood. Currently I do, but I wanna know what would be the difference in the finish. That's what we're gonna talk about tonight. Uh, whichever is cheaper, so we got Jeffrey saying whichever is cheaper, PPG. Okay, uh, just me just started Eastwood, PPG shop line. Chroma Max, we got Canada in the house. Napa, okay, Napa's cool. House of Color, DuPont, Chroma Max Pro, PPG. Okay, now, have you guys ever experimented with other brands like me? I like to experiment with other brands. Sometimes I'll get stuck on a brand. Like, I remember in the past, I was stuck on DuPont for a long time. I was using all the DuPont products. Uh, and then after I moved to PPG and I used a lot of PPG for years, PPG, 
Uh, but in between of using those, or as I was using those other products, I would test out Omni, I would test out Advantage, I'd test out these other brands just to see how they were. And some were really good. Some were really good, but there were small companies that ended up dying out because they didn't have the marketing power to, to basically stay in business, right? <clears throat> some were really shit, you know? Uh, we used to get my tool guy, the Snap-on tool guy used to come around. Uh, no, it might have been Pro Tools. He used to come around, you know, when you're working in the automotive zone, you got the tool trucks coming around. Some of you guys may relate. And they, they come out and they sell you some, some clear coat, right? They're like, oh, try this out. You know, it's only 75 bucks for the kit. And you're like, wow, a gallon kit, you know, you get the hardener, two to one mixture with the clear coat. You're like, wow, let's try it. So there were many times that I tried some, my dad tried some, the other guys we tried, tried. And then, you know, we use it and we're like, man, this shit is, it's just bad shit. The rape trucks. <laughs> so it's, I don't want to call it that because it was the guy, you know, running the truck was actually a friend of ours as well. You know, the salesman is kind of a cool guy, but uh, anyway, they, they're, they're okay people, right? They got to make a living. So some of the clears we mix up and we're like, wow, man, it's all like, it looks yellow looking, but when you lay it on the, the paint, you know, it looks, it doesn't, you, the tint really doesn't show that bad when you lay it on, right? You're not going to really, you're not, if you're, if your clear coat is a little yellow, cause you, you can have a good clear coat and another clear coat. And if you put it next to each other, maybe we'll do some demos next time. <clears throat> You'll be able to see the little tint difference. And I don't know if we can show the, the quality of, of that on this video here. But if you're using a good clear coat, you'll be able to see, wow, that's really clear. And then some of them will have a little tint of yellow. And when I say yellow, it's not like yellow, yellow, right? Just a little shade uh, darker. <clears throat> and, um, but when you lay that stuff on the car, you really don't see the difference. All right, but you know it's, it's cheaper stuff. But when you really see the differences, Eric Pierce, what's going on? Crestview, Florida, VIP. We got a lot of people saying, what's up, Tony in here? Thank you, guys. What's up? And uh, for the guy who gave me the thumbs down right now, why don't you just get out of here? Get out of here. You know, there's 69 people on here. I should have 69 thumbs up. So if you guys haven't given me a thumbs up yet, you guys better start clicking the thumbs up right now. There's 68. I should have 68 likes right now on this video. Keep clicking. I need to see that there because that is a bunch of BS if I got no like buttons down there. We've got 60 people on the call and I got 18 likes. Come on, man. Keep clicking like. <laughs> what is the best clear coat? All right. So anyway, so when you're doing, thank you guys for the likes. When you're doing painting and all that, right? And especially with cheaper stuff. Keep clicking, guys. I it's at 38. Keep clicking. Um, you're going to notice dieback on cheaper clears. So this stuff, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest. When I first did a review of it, I thought it was okay. I gave it like a 7 out of 10, all right, in my book. But after, you know, using it a few times, uh, I noticed – it wasn't that great. So this is advantage. It's a good all around clear, but if you're, if you're looking for um, top notch, right? This really not so good. It's, it's good for probably getting jobs out, right? You're doing shop jobs. This is good enough. But if you want good, good stuff, you know, it's okay. Um, and here's the other thing. This is Advantage, by the way. High solids, clear coat, Advantage. I think I paid about 100 and change for this setup here. Uh, here's the other thing. Here's the other kick in the pants. You could use a high-end clear coat, okay, and you could use a little cheaper clear coat, okay? You spray the car, right? Maybe you say you have two cars. You spray the cars, and you wait two weeks. This one is still, it's going to have a nice gloss. You're going to get very low dieback, right? Whereas you paint the car and a couple of weeks later, it starts to get a little dull and a little dried up looking. But it's still glossy, right? It's just not as glossy, right? This stuff is going to do really well for that. Actually, my BMW, I painted it 
maybe a month and a half ago or so. I haven't buffed it out yet, but it's still pretty glossy, right? Even my Miata here, I did. Let me show, let me show you really quickly, really quickly. VIP member all the way from Detroit, Michigan. So look, you know, hardly had any dieback. It look, it's still very, very glossy, okay? And this is the, the house of color, right? Haven't buffed it out yet. And it looks really, really good, right? Some of the other clears, after about a week or two, it's going to start to get dull, all right? But if you color sand and buff the cheaper stuff out, right, you can color sand and, cheat and, and buff this out, and it'll look just like this. You're not going to be able to tell the difference. That's how you can cheat. And a lot of body shops do that. They use the cheap clear, right, on everybody's car, unless you're really into their what they're doing. You're watching every step of the way. You're buying, you know, you're making sure they're doing the right work. Most of them use a cheap clear, and they, they let it go out. If, if customers say something, oh, how am I then they'll buff it out quick. Or if it's a, a pretty, you know, expensive job, they'll basically use the cheap shit and buff it out for you. So it looks like this, right? Just try to save costs. You don't, they don't go crazy on buffing. They just give it a light color sand and then buff, right? Get it out in one day. But um, there are also some cheaper brand clear coats that get this kind of result and you're paying a lot less. And actually, I, am, I got a guy contact me about a week ago and we're kind of going back and forth is an unknown European brand. And they're gonna be sending me some clear coat to test with. And they're saying this stuff is top of the line. Top of the line stuff um, for a lot less money. So they're gonna send me some, some clear coat. I'm gonna do some reviews and test it out. And I'm gonna let you guys know how it was. And if I think if it's good stuff, I'll let you guys know, is that cool? So I'm just waiting on the material. They're going to send me some primer, uh, a bunch of other materials and stuff. And um, I, you know, I don't want to recommend shit products. If I can recommend some products that are going to save you money and get pretty good results, you know, close to this, then why not? Because I'll use it, right? I will use that. If I can save, you know, I like this stuff, but it, it is costly. You know, I like this stuff, but it is costly. If I can get another European brand, I used to spray with, uh, what was it? Was it Standox years ago? Like this is over 10, 10 years ago. I used to spray with Standox, a European brand. Very good clear coat. Um, anyway, somebody wanted to see the, the Miata here. So here's the Miata. This, is, this was shot with um, the House of Color. And I just started buffing it out. Like last, the last time we did our YouTube live, right? I did this side. I haven't done that side yet. But, you know, I've been so busy around the house and stuff. But I, I'm going to actually cut and buff the whole thing very, very soon and get it looking good. You can see the difference. You can see the difference in shine from this side and that side. This actually could have been cut a lot more. Um, but I was just rushing on the show to, to give you an idea of how it looks. So the rest of, you know, I started sanding the door, the bottom part here. It all has to be done. And uh, it's looking pretty cool. I'm actually, I just texted a guy. And uh, I might be getting a 2004 Miata Mazda Speed uh, Turbo. So the guys like, and we're in process of uh, making a deal. I'm, I might go take a look at it this weekend sometime. Uh, the cut means when you color sand and buff. So when you want to get mirror finishes, usually on every custom show paint job that you see at SEMA or any other car show, these cars go under intensive color sanding and buffing processes where, you know, you would lay the clear coat like this Beamer, right? Fresh clear coat. You'd wait about a couple of weeks, let it dry nice and hard. Then you basically sand it down with 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. Some people like to go 
and you buff it out with your buffing pads. Oh, and a lot of people ask me where I get my buffing pads from. I'm in the process of working a deal out with Buff and Shine uh, directly from the manufacturer to get you uh, this stuff. is all made in California. Very, very good product. And I'm going to actually start reselling them. And you can get them from me at a very, very good price. I'm also going to be relisting <clears throat> a lot of my products on Amazon. So that's going to give you even better prices on all the spray guns that we have and everything. Yes, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty much I'm going to SEMA. It's not 100%, um, but most like I bought my ticket. I have my ticket to go. It's just I haven't booked my, uh, my airfare and hotel. I didn't do all of that yet, but I really want to get out to SEMA. I have some business to do with a couple of guys. I got people that want to meet me. And um, why, you going to, you going to SEMA, SEMA, Tony? Tony Vaz? <clears throat> did, you, did I spray the mini truck? No. The mini truck, <clears throat> I'm probably going to do next year, within the next couple of months. It's going to start to get cold here. And I don't like doing too much in the shop when it starts getting cold. Because <clears throat> I don't have to, right? I don't have to do it. I do it because I like to do it. I wish. Turbine, let me know. They will be sold in a kit. Yes, they will be sold in a kit. You're going to get the adapter, and it's not that much money. It's gonna, I think it's like 50 bucks. 50 bucks, give or take. But you're going to get uh, the adapter for your 7-inch buffer, which is a Velcro ventilated adapter here, which is really, really cool. Okay, you're going to get the wool pad white is a little bit more heavy duty, heavy duty, cut, heavy duty cutting. You're going to get the yellow, which is a little softer because it has a little bit of synthetic strings in it, which make the pad a little softer. So this is, this is good for all around buffing. Honestly, I really only use the yellow. I don't use the white. The white is good for buffing single stage and then you actually move to something like this okay and then you do this this is the foam pad it's your final <clears throat> final process sorry about my throat I got something in my throat this is the final buffing process and when you put this on you want to make sure because foam gets hot really really quick especially when you're doing the glaze okay this is the last step this is filling in all the swirl marks and little sand, not, not really sand scratches, mostly swirl marks from the wool, all right? So this stuff is the last process here that you wanna do, and you wanna make sure you line up your, it's cool because it has this little plastic guide here. I don't know if you see it, this, the plastic guide here, okay, and it lines up in your buffer, and you can align the holes like this, so it, it vents and you keep it cool. Super, super good system here. And all the products are made in California. American made stuff, super high quality. Um, and I'm also going to meet those guys at SEMA. So I'm going to meet the buffing guys over there, uh, the, the clear coats, um, sandpapers. I want to start getting some sandpapers for you guys. Um, I used to use Norton a lot. I used a lot of Japanese brands of sandpapers. Let me see what I have right now, but uh, we've been getting some pretty cool contacts lately, um, and they want to hook us up. So by them hooking me up, I can hook you guys up uh, and get really good quality sandpapers. Uh, let's see, what brand is this? This is KG, made in Canada. See, this is, I, I bought like a whole case of this a while ago. So I don't even know if KG still makes this. Maybe they might still be in business. But there's a lot of stuff. So I want to start getting all these materials put together for you guys so you guys have a good source to get good quality materials at a lower price. So that anybody in here would be interested in something like that, good high-quality products at a lower price. You know, not – Name brand like 3M. You guys know that 3M bought out Meguiar's, right? 
looks like our give me some feedback it looks like we're cutting in and out I'm just gonna set it on the table for now yeah 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 okay so 3m bought out Meguiar's yeah you guys know that some of you guys don't know see some some of you guys didn't know but Meguiar's had done such a great job in marketing Meguiar's that 3M couldn't beat them out. So they actually bought them out. So they're keeping the Meguiar's brand, but in the back, just like what Coca-Cola does, right? Buy everybody out. You buy your competitors out. Um, and then put it all under one roof with different corporation names and all that. So anyway, so that's what I want to do. Why should we go out paying high prices to good companies, right? And I know, I know John, he's a great guy. Um, but if we can save some cash in the process when we're doing our DIY projects and get the same quality, why not? If you can't beat them, then join them. Yeah, but sometimes, you know, morals come into play. Sometimes you don't wanna join them, right? <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's that. Um, anyway, so I will, got, you know, I'll keep you guys posted on what's going on. Again, I'm trying to make it to SEMA. I got my ticket. It's just, I got it. I got to sort my schedule out because I got so many things going on. Again, if you guys didn't hit, if you guys did not hit the like button, hit the like button right now. <laughs> the, the thumbs up button. <laughs> if you're hitting the thumbs down, you shouldn't even be on here. We want cheap, good shit. That's, I should, that's what I should name our store, cheapgoodshit.com. <laughs> Give me some ideas for a store name. <laughs> uh, SEMA stands for, I'll tell you right now. There's a name for it. Uh, I don't know. It's some sort of big corporate auto thing. I'm on the website right now. Uh, Specialty Equipment Market Association. So it's basically a, a big corporate gathering for businesses introducing new products and buyers buying products. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a, like a huge car world and it's not open to the public. It's really only open to, yeah, John sold the Valspar for sure. Valspar company. You know he's getting a pretty pretty penny for that. Royalties. Because he's still promoting it. Good cheap shit. <laughs> Do you always use a sealer over primer before you spray base coat? Yes and no. If you want to, you can. Or you could do what I usually do is you buy a primer sealer. So it's a two-in-one. You could get a primer sealer where you prime it, you block it out, sand it, and it's, it works as a sealer. So you got a primer sealer. So that's pretty good. So I'm really excited to get this new... Yeah, Standox was badass when I used to paint with it. I haven't painted with it in a long time. But um, I'm really excited to get introduced to these new products. I can't wait to test them out. Um, you know, I got, I got all these projects I got to finish. And I'm working on some sponsorships right now for, for the turbo that we're going to be doing in here. Uh, I'm probably going to be putting a turbo kit in this Miata here. Um, and, it, you know, the suspension, I think the, the differential needs some bushings back there. But uh, other than that, this is a pretty solid ride. Um, pretty clean, pretty solid. It has new brakes all around, brand new tires and rims, uh, new suspension. Uh, the engine's solid, so probably going to put in, you know, some, some pretty cool th tricks and stuff to it, but uh, not go too crazy. It's fading in and out. What's good, Tony? Question about thinner and reducer. What is the difference? 
It depends what you're talking about. The little truck is in my other garage. Reducer is, is this stuff right here. Okay, you can use this for reducing clear coat with Omni and your base coat. Lacquer thinner, if you're talking about lacquer thinner, that's good for cleaning your gun, cleaning parts, uh, getting paint off your hands or whatever, um, even mixing in lacquer primer. I don't really use lacquer primer anymore. Uh, we used to use a lot of it 15 years ago. Not too much anymore with the lacquer glaze putty and all that. You know, uh, the mini truck is in my other garage. I have another garage. So that's sitting over there. I was doing buffing. And the worst thing you want to do is have a, a project that you're going to be painting in the area of a car you're doing buffing. Because with, with the uh, compounds, sometimes you get some splatter. And just the air, it contaminates the air a little bit. And you could end up with chemical reactions and stuff. So <clears throat> if you're doing color set, if you're doing final stage detailing and buffing on a car, just make sure you're not doing it near a car that you're going to be doing some body work and paint on. So that's why I totally, I just took it out, put it in the other garage, and um, we're doing the buffing on both cars. So this red car can stay there. This one we're doing the buffing on. This one, I'm probably going to get up early, maybe on Saturday or something, and put this freaking car together. It's just, I got to get it done. It's just been sitting. <clears throat> been using the Wet Wet Plus, very flexible and single stage. So who's well worth it? <laughs> Con conky conky. I'm going through some nasty financial situations right now, but when can I... Fuck it, I'm going to pay to be a VIP member. You guys are funny, dudes. Well worth it, Eric Pierce said. Hey, Tony, when spot blending, does the size of the gun matter? Yes and no. If you're doing a little area, hopefully my internet doesn't butch up. But if you're doing a little bit of blending, I don't know, on a rail like this, you're going to want to use a smaller gun, absolutely, right? But if you're blending a door... If you're blending into a door, you want to use a bigger gun, right? You could blend your base and then clear the whole door, right? So, you know, this is not buffed yet. I still got to cut this down and buff it so it's, it looks like glass. Little, you know, little texture in the paint, which is normal. You know, new cars get orange peel. So, little texture in the paint. But when we buff it out, it's going to look amazing. You guys got to see a big run I got. Uh, see, and I... <laughs> wet wet plus sounds like some big fat <laughs> I'm not going to say it I got a big fat run here I don't know if you guys let me see if you guys can see it I'm just going to wait because it's actually a little couple of seconds delayed on my side you guys see that you guys see that run or no it's probably hard for you to see but there's a run here. I, I really laid the clear on this, this uh, hard top, and it just ran. It dripped, and it ran down. So this, we got to make sure we block sand it flat and buff it out. And that's the cool thing with, uh, with clear coat. Yeah, you guys can't see it. When I do the recording of it on HD, it's going to be a lot better because I'll have all the lights set up for you. But um, <clears throat> the cool thing about clear coat is, you could always cut it and buff it. You know, you don't have to stress out. It's, I would rather have more clear than not enough clear, right? Because if you have more clear and you make a run, you could color sand it, you can sand it flat and buff it out. If you're dry, right, it's going to be more of a pain in the ass to sand and buff out. And sometimes you can't, you can't sand enough there's nothing there's not enough there to sand and buff so always it's very important when you're spraying to take your time and make sure it's laying on glossy as you you're spraying right you want to go slow and you want to make sure it's laying on glossy as you spray and try to avoid a dry spot and if you see a dry spot right if you're done with the fender and you're going to the door and you see a dry spot 
go back and make it wet, right? Get rid of the dry spot. Awesome, Tony Vaz. Yeah, no problem. So that's the deal. That's the dealio. All right, dude, 80 people watching. I need more thumbs up. You guys got to give me the thumbs up, dude. So, so that means... So that means there's about 65, there's about 15 haters in here who are not giving me a thumbs up. LOL, wet, wet plus is a auto, auto band clear. Works pretty well. Excellent for high build for painting flake and candy. VIP member, Las Vegas, missed the last two shows. Hey, driveway, at least you're on tonight. Tony V, Tony <laughs> Tony V, just like me, Tony B, Tony V. <laughs> yeah, no problem. No problemo. So how's everybody's Thursday night? You guys got anything planned uh, for the weekend? Anything fun? No, I have not really used the paint thickness meter. <laughs> no hater here. I gave you a thumbs up. Thanks, Mr. Andy Wilson. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to go to SEMA. Hopefully, I mean, I got my ticket. Just got to make it out there. And uh, what else? Moving all weekend sucks. Paint the CRV, nice. Car show tomorrow, sweet. Football and me, sweet. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Looking for car deals all over the weekend, cool. Well, you guys want to know what I'm doing? <laughs> Appreciate the clearing up on the wet, wet plus. <laughs> Camaro Firebird, Firebird, I'll be working on my 65 Mustang. Sweet. You guys are, pro you guys are like doing the same shit I am. Me, I, got, I just bought myself a freaking pole saw. And I'm, I'm like cutting some trees around my property. So I got this sucker right here, Remington. It goes on the pole, 15 foot pole, right? And I was like cutting some trees some, you know, big branches. I was testing it out today, long pole. So <clears throat> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be cutting some trees around the property. Uh, and then Sunday, my yard guy's gonna come. He's gonna pick up a load of crap for me and we're gonna do a little barbecue with the family and stuff like that. And, uh, and you know, I gotta get up early one weekend and I wanna just put this thing together quick. Really, it's only gonna take me maybe two, three hours, really. Shouldn't take me that long and uh, get it on the ground. <clears throat> Building a fiberglass mold for the C4 Corvette hood. Woo! Nice. Like to see that. Painting the bumper on my Camaro this weekend. What kind of Camaro? Working on my Miata. Plugs, wires. Eric, what kind of Miata you got? Getting ready for paint. Dude, you better send me some pictures. I am a Miata freak. I don't know why. I just like them. I think because those are the times when I had a Miata when I was young and I used to pick up all the girls. <clears throat> had a Miata. I had a SLK. I had a sweet ass 69 Buick Riviera. 1995 Miata. Sweet. Eric, I'd like to see some pictures. Uh, had a GSXR 600. <clears throat> Anthony, for SEMA, how do I get into the show? They said I have to be in the union. Well, you have to be related to the car industry. So if you know somebody that has a, <clears throat> a car company, right, they can kind of write you in. I'm trying to get my nephew to go with me. I don't know if you guys seen my nephew yesterday on the other call. He's, uh, he's actually going to Mexico on Monday, but I told them, you want to go to SEMA with me? So it's just a pain in the ass because they really try to, they really verify you to go to SEMA. You can't just, you know, put a name badge on, just make a, a you know, a, a at home name badge. So I'm trying to get my nephew in. It's just, they're fucking sending me a whole bunch of paperwork that I got to fill out and I got to, he has to have a business card under my company and this, this, this. I'm like, what the heck? I'm like, dude, my nephew's going to be my cameraman, man. I mean, let's, what's the big deal? I have the company. Let's, I mean, so I don't know why. I don't know why they're giving me a big deal this year. 
Um, I went years ago, and this is my second time going. I should have been going every year, but man, I've just been so busy with other stuff. But now I'm focusing more on, you know, the car stuff, and I really wanna, I really wanna start doing some cool stuff <clears throat> on YouTube and building cars and and all that stuff. You know, like I said, I'm not going anywhere. I just gotta start getting my ass in gear and getting shit done. <clears throat> so, how do I send them to you? Eric, you could just email them to me, bro. Or maybe even make a YouTube video, Eric, and send me a video of it. That'll be even cooler. Eric, do you have a YouTube account? Why don't you like take a video of your Miata, Eric? You know, and like, Open, you know, open your YouTube thing up, upload it, and send me, just send me the link. Like, when you get on next time, you can send me a link here. Oh, the last time I did a, the buffing here, I totally forgot to talk about buffing speed. So, the buffing speed, you want to start buffing at about 1,500 RPM to get the compound in, and when you're buffing, Around 1,700 RPM is a good speed. 17, I think 18 is a little too high. 17, 17, 5 RPM, right? 1,700 RPM is a good buffing speed to buff, all right? Just to let you know. When you're getting started with it, 1,500 is good. Just to get started, you get the compound all around. And once you start getting to, to do the buff, 1700 that's the sweet spot number um and when you're doing the foam pad you could lower it back down to 15 because that foam pad gets hot quick and you don't need a lot of power for that foam pad to to glass it out uh yes eric my email tony at learn auto body and paint.com guys uh how do you keep the compound from splatting around? Well, you just try to keep your buffer straight and you just get it around and you squeeze the trigger and then as it's, you squeeze it and you let it go. So it's like, you let it, you let the buffer, you don't just go full high speed, right? You just, I'll make a video of it next time. You just pull the trigger and let it die out. So it just rubs, rubs in quick and then you just continue buffing. That's how I do it. Uh, so Buddy Lee, getting a rusty 1980 Corolla wagon ready for primer. Hopefully it's not rusty by the time you prime it. Driveway auto body, my new Nissan 4,000 miles paint peeling off bumper. Nissan refuses to paint it. Oh my God, really? New Nissan 4,000 miles paint peeling off bumper and Nissan refuses to paint it? You bought two new cars from them? Holy crap, dude. I would make a big deal out of it. Why don't, I mean, that's crazy. That is crazy. I would, I would go talk to the, uh, the manager. If not that manager, go corporate. Go to corporate. Make a big deal, dude. That's BS. Hank Scott says, Wet Wet Plus, I've used it and it's nice. Finishing up my paint booth. Woohoo! Uh, uh, okay, so I'm just catching up. Cool, I get you, Tony. Uh, auto auction. Just sprayed epoxy primer on my Civic this afternoon. Tomorrow, what's sounding? Hope it turns out. Great. Will you ever do anything in person? Training, three day, three day course. I'll fly out there. You know, I was thinking of doing something like that last year. I put it out there. And we got a few people interested, but the timings just didn't work out for all of us. So I didn't follow through on it. You know, maybe in the future, if I get a bigger location or when I get a bigger location, it's not really the location. It's just getting the timing and the, the right people interested and available at that time to come and do it. You know, if, if we can set something up, I'd like to do that. You know, I don't want too many people, maybe five, six guys max. 
Uh, Eric Pierce, did you take the soft top out when you put the hard top on or leave it on under the hard top? I left it on. It's on right now un under my hard top. So when I take my hard top off, I could just flip over my, um, my soft top. So it's like it is sitting back there. I don't know if you can see it, but my soft top is sitting back there. What I have to do is actually uh, clean my glass. Like the tint, there's tint back here, and I just don't like that the tint is kind of peeling on the edges. So I want to scrape it off and clean it and get it nice and clean. And then maybe, maybe put new tint. If it looks okay and I don't need it, I'll just leave it. Yeah, you could just smear it. Smear it all over at first if you want. Mendoza. I know this can't be Canada, right? <laughs> I work for Nissan as a mechanic, and it's the first time I hear this. Uh, call Nissan direct. Oh, absolutely. Did you think a $70 paint cover for Harbor Freight is a good for a one-time paint job? Caesar, it's not the one-time paint job. It's how the gun is going to perform. You know, if it's going to perform like shit, it's going to perform like shit the first time and the last time. You know what I mean? I mean, it, I don't know what to tell you. I would not use a Harbor Freight spray gun or any of those cheap kits that you can get for 80 bucks with three spray guns. They're just pieces of crap. I've bought them. I've made reviews on them. They're on my other YouTube videos, and I, ju I just throw them out. They're just very bad. Um, U-Paul is a good undercoating brand, which is what I'm going to use on the Daihatsu Hijet project, the main truck that I got. Um, Bondo brand has a, a sprayable undercoating. I don't know if I have any right now. No, I don't have any. I must have ran. Oh, this. Oh, shit. No, this is adhesion promoter. Uh, no, I don't have any with me, but Bond, no, what was it? Bondo brand or Evercoat? Might have been Evercoat had a brand. It was called Sprayable Undercoat, Paintable Undercoating. And you buy it in a little aerosol, and it was really good shit for doing truck beds and stuff. It wasn't super thick, but it got the job done and it looked really good, and you only needed like three, four cans to do a job, a whole bed, truck bed, uh, or underneath cars. I remember I did my 69 Camaro with it. The whole underneath I did with that. Oh. No, I don't have it. Let me see. Uh, here are my BMW lights. Oh, speaking of filler, I got these guys. They say they got some amazing body filler that they're gonna send me as well. So they said that it's so creamy, it's so smooth, it's like glaze putty, and you get no pinholes. I'm like, what? So they're gonna send me some of that Bondo. If it's good shit, I'll tell you about it. <clears throat> uh, no, it th I don't have any of that stuff, I'm sorry. Palmer. What size is the shop? Uh, the, the complete building is 2,500 square feet. <clears throat> and I have an office behind there. I have my office. I have uh, a gym, shower, bathroom, and a one bedroom back there. So it's pretty cool. This is like, this is like my man pad. You know, my, what do you call it? Man pad or... Uh, what the hell do you call it, man? I got a freaking brain fart. Is it okay to paint my two-car garage that has a water heater? Yeah, why not? I have a water heater in my garage here. I paint it here. Any tips? Is it a gas water heater? <laughs> that might be why you're asking. Uh, any tips for applying rock guard texture to, to rocker panels? 
Man cave. What did I call it? What did I call it? I just said, see, dude, um, I don't even remember. what. I just called it something. I was looking for man cave. Man garage or some shit. <laughs> Is it okay to paint in my two-car garage? I have a Dude, I got to show you something. Guys, you got to check out this testimonial. I don't know if, if Paul is on right now, but last weekend I went to Paul's house. This guy is going to be painting. He's a VIP member right here. Hopefully we see it. I'm going to hold it up. He is a VIP member and he lives pretty close to me. He is going to be painting his Cessna 150 in his two-car garage. And I shot a video. Hold on. <coughs> Where the hell is this video? I'm going to show you the video we made. <coughs> Where's my video? from LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com. And I just bumped into a Learn Auto Body VIP member who lives pretty close to me. So I decided to come by and say hi. He is actually gonna be painting his Cessna 150 in his garage here, two car garage. We got the wing set up on the wall. He has a pretty, very clean setup here. Uh, he's gonna end up painting the floors and let's introduce you to Paul right here. What's going on? I don't know much. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about your plane. Uh, basically, it's a Cessna 150. And, uh, you know, as you can tell, the paint's get a little faded on it. It's the original paint work. So uh, when I come across your videos, I said, well, if each of the paint cars in the garage, I can stick my plane in there. <laughs> so I ended up pulling the wings off it and sticking it in here and, uh, and got the VIP course and uh, starting to work on it. That's awesome i can't believe it he's got a plane in his garage and because he's so close i'm gonna stop by every once in a while and just help him out whatever questions you got i mean i mean this is so cool i've never been so close living wise to a vip member where i can pretty cool right it's a it's a couple minutes long i'll actually upload the full video later <clears throat> but he's going to be using a special aircraft paint he has the special primer already. It's a pretty thin primer. And um, it has to be, he told me that the regulations are pretty strict. After he paints each panel, they have to be weighed and balanced. Like each side of the wing, it has to be balanced. So pretty cool. Uh, it's gonna be a single stage paint, um, aircraft paint. I don't know what brand, it was an Emron. Uh, it was another brand, but it has to be an aircraft paint. Is going to do it single stage, uh, no clear coat, because that's the way it is uh, with whatever he's doing. I don't know. He was he knows he knew more about it than I did because he's doing a research. But it's going to be a single stage three tone. He's going to do red, white, and blue, but do a different color scheme, and um, it's going to be pretty cool. So, yeah, FAA approved aircraft paint, basically. So, you know, while he's working on it, I, right now he's working on stripping it down with paint stripper. So he has like, you know, this five gallon thing of paint stripper. He's got to paint it on and, and take off all the paint and he's going to paint the body first and do the wings. So I'm going to be stopping over every once in a while and checking out what he's doing, give him some tips, tricks, maybe help him out and, uh, and uh, you know, shoot some cool video and keep you guys updated. You know, it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, he's a really nice dude from Melbourne, Australia. Very, very nice guy. Very smart guy mechanically. He's an aircraft mechanic. Um, seems like he did a lot of things in his life. And I like the guy. Super cool dude. Like, I'm, I'm very happy to have a VIP dude right around the corner from me. He's literally like 10 minutes away. So that's freaking cool. Man pad. I called it a man pad. <laughs> Thank you, brilliant Brilla Krilla. Anyway, 
All right, guys, we are on for a, a while now. We went on like a little bit over than I expected. Usually, I like to stay on 30, 40 minutes, nice and short. But thank you for getting on so much, everybody. Hit the like button right now. If you just came on and you didn't hit the like button yet, give me a like down there. Hit like, and um, I really appreciate it. So for all of you guys who are not VIP guys, check out the VIP course. I think you're really, really going to enjoy it. Uh, you know, we document everything that we do here at learnautobodyandpaint.com. And, uh, and that's it. So I will see the rest of you guys uh, next week, same time, 8 p.m. Central, Thursday night. You know, I want you guys to have a great weekend, right? Um, have fun. Be safe with your family. And um, we will get on next week. And I'll keep you updated with SEMA. I'll keep you updated with some of the new products that we got. And we're going to be lowering prices with all of our spray guns. Um, I'm trying to work out better deals with the manufacturer. I want to lower prices on, on some of that stuff for you. And we're going to be selling stuff on Amazon. And it's going to be, um, we're just restructuring a lot of things here. And I want to make, <clears throat> I want to be able to give you guys great products at low prices. So I'm working on all these contacts with distributors and manufacturers right now. But uh, anyway, that's the deal. All right. I got a couple of runs on, on, on my van. Oh, man. Take them out. Send and buff them out. Have a good night, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you on next week. Good night. Have a great weekend. Cheers. Woohoo! And you can go to this site to get your free DIY auto body manual if you are brand new to this show. See you next week. Peace.